Hello and welcome back to Frugally Delicious. Today I'm doing another pantry clean out and I'm probably not gonna use all this in this last pantry clean out, this is a third, but I'm gonna do my best. So I did wanna give you a before shot, so I'm gonna insert that here. These are the items that I needed to use up. This is the original shot from the very first video. It does not include freezer items, which is some corn, some ground beef, some ground turkey, some regular beef, just a few little things that I just didn't want to pull out. And then of course, this is the after. This is the third video I'm doing. So the first two are done and this is what's left over. I have not gone shopping except for like basic items, like sour cream, milk, cheese, that sort of stuff, perishables, butter, um, but I haven't bought any pantry staples. So I really wanted to use up these items and this is what's left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get into the video and let's make a few meals from this. Hopefully it's something you've never seen or eaten before and you know, something you might wanna give a try. I will be making meatloaf in a pan. No oven required guys super easy and it cooks a lot faster than in the oven you're not going to get that nice crispy edges to it that you would get inside of the oven but it's still really tasty and it'll come together a lot faster than cooking it in the oven and basically you can make this however you normally make your meatloaf in the oven you just do the same thing you just put it in a pan I am kind of winging it because all I have are some chips and they're going a little stale, so I think it'll work perfectly in this. I do like to add an egg to mine. Get that bad boy in there. And I have a new addition to this pantry clean out. I have some salsa that was lurking in the refrigerator, so I do want to use it as much as possible. And this will give it a nice flavor. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salsa to it. Not a lot, but it's, I think, really gonna give it a nice flavor inside. And then somebody left like less than a teaspoon of um, soy sauce in this bottle in the refrigerator. It may have been me, I don't think it was, but anyway, I'm just gonna add that to this. If you've never added soy sauce or Worcestershire sauce to your meatloaf, it's super delicious in there. I'm just gonna add a splash of pepper in there. Some of my sea salt, this was a grinder, I just cut off the, uh, well my husband cut off the top there so that we could get inside and then just grind it up. And it was just, it was easier to use. I couldn't get out the last little bit that was in there. So I wanna use it all up. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt in there. And then this is another one of those spices I was trying to use up. It's like garlic, onions, and then some like, maybe some Southwestern flavors like cumin, um, I don't know, some little peppers in there. I don't really know specifically what's in here, but it smells good and it tastes good in things. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that in there. Just gonna mix that up before I add in my ground, that's actually ground turkey. I don't think it's ground beef. All right, so I'm gonna add that in here. And then just mash up that ground turkey or beef or whatever you like to use in yours. All right, and then for your absorber, I'm personally gonna be putting some chips in there. You can use any kind of chips. You could use rice, you can use oats, you can use pasta, you could use really whatever you wanted to. These are just going a little bit stale. They've been open for a little bit, but they're still tasty and they haven't expired yet, but they're just getting, uh, they're just getting up there in the old age. We all know what that's like. Give that a mix up. And sometimes you gotta be a little sneaky with those kiddos and get some veggies in the meatloaf. Don't tell anybody, just put it in there. <laughs> they will never know. I like to put a little bit of carrot in mine, just kind of help stretch out the meat and make it go a little bit further. Even if you're only serving for one, it's a good way to get some sneaky vegetables in for yourself too. You could also put really small diced potatoes in here. You could add celery, you can add onions, you can add so much to it. Bulk it up, it'll still have that meat flavor, but you'll also get veggies and just kind of stretch out the meat. I am also gonna put a little bit of ketchup in mine. I like it in it and I also like it on top. It's your meatloaf. Don't let anybody tell you what you can do with your meatloaf. All right, I told you this was super easy, guys. All that's left is to cook it. 
I put a little bit of oil in this nonstick pan. All right, and the pan is cold. I'm just gonna add the meatloaf directly into it. And by the way, I did not cook those carrots. They will cook inside of the meatloaf. You can cook your vegetables before you put them in the meatloaf. And you will just need to cover this and cook this on a medium low temp. I'm setting mine to a three and I'll just check on it. When it's just about done, I'll flip it over and let it cook the top part. It just cooks a little bit better that way. So just flip once and that's it. All right, so that took 20 minutes. I flipped it halfway through. And then of course I topped it with some ketchup and a little bit of jalapeno because it makes it look pretty. Okay, and I'm just eating this. I'm not gonna do any sides or anything. Of course, serve it with whatever you would like, right? But I just love meatloaf. It has a really nice Southwestern flavor to it with the addition of those crushed corn tortilla chips I put in there. It has a nice corn flavor built into it. I cannot taste the carrots at all. It's super good. You can season this however you want to. Whatever, whatever makes your taste buds dance and sing. But it's really good. It's super simple. I love that I didn't have to put this in the oven and there's only one pan to clean. Basically, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the rest of this uh, corn muffin mix and also the rest of my corn meal. I'm trying to go online and see if I can find some recipes. I don't know, we'll see. I am gonna use the rest of this box though. Um, I used half of this in another recipe in another video and so I have about half of it left. I am gonna be making a corn muffin casserole thing on top of the stove. <laughs> so I went online and I looked at a bunch of recipes. I'm not following any one of them in particular, but there were different things I liked about different ones. So I gathered that information and then just I'm throwing it together. I have one fourth cup milk. I got one tablespoon melted butter. I'm just gonna add that into my milk. Now I suppose you could probably use some oil, but I just prefer butter. I think it gives it a, a richer, more buttery flavor. I'm putting one egg in here, like that. Just give that a quick mix in, beaten. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of sour cream in here. Hopefully this is gonna give it like a nice, rich, moist kind of a flavor. I got some salsa, I really gotta use this up. So I'm gonna give it that flavor, nice tomato base, a little richness from that. And then it just has lots of spices in here. So I don't really have to worry about seasoning this up. All right, I'm gonna add in my corn muffin mix. And in true frugally delicious fashion, I didn't get a big enough container, but I'm working with it. I have one very small bell pepper that I chopped and then pan fried just until the initial crunch was taken away. And then I put butter, salt, and pepper in here. And I actually was gifted these. My father-in-law gave these to me and they're just so cute. That one's a bit deformed, but <laughs> they're very cute. They're very small. So they're kind of perfect for like a single serving. That's almost a, a full grown one. But now I need to use those up. The cycle never ends. And that's okay, because I'm glad and happy to have it. Bell peppers are expensive, so those were given to me for free. I'm gonna add in those bell peppers. I have one whole corn on the cob that I cooked and then took it off of the core. Then I used my immersion blender and I kind of blended it. Um, there's still some whole pieces in there. You could honestly probably just use regular whole corn without um, like mashing it up, but I want the flavor dispersed like throughout the entire thing, like each bite. So I, I figured this might be the best way to do that. And since I'm running out of room in here, I'm just gonna pour this in here and mix it all up. I do like to get all the little last bits out of there. I don't know. Maybe it's just my OCD kicking in. But just like I gotta get all the little tasty morsels out of there. Vigorously mix that up. Now I'm, now I'm hoping I didn't put too much liquid in here. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't follow a recipe, Miss Frugally Delicious. Eh, it'll be all right. Everything's fine. It's okay. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I am cooking it on top of the stove. I have a pan here that I put some oil in and spread it all around, even up on the sides. And my burner 
is not turned on yet. I'm just going to add this hopefully delicious corn casserole pie thing in here. <laughs> Cleaned her out pretty good. And well, since I've never made this on the stove in my life, I don't know how long it's going to take to cook, but I am going to cover it and I'm going to turn it on to a three for now. I have nine on my stove setting, so I'm just going to turn that to a three and I'll let you know how long it takes to cook. All right, there she is. So beautiful. Okay, so I cooked this for 50 minutes. I had to turn down the heat because it was like a bubbling and I didn't want any bubbling going on. So I turned it down to a one on my nine settings. So basically you're going to want to cook it on a low. At the 40 minute mark, I flipped it over in the pan. So this is the bottom and this is the top. They both got a nice little golden brown to them. Not burnt. That's just like a very light crisping of the outside. Super happy with the way it looks. It smells delicious. My husband keeps saying it smells delicious. So I plated it and I put a little bit of salsa and sour cream on top. You see all those little bell pepper pieces inside. Oh, it's so beautiful. All right, give it a try. That is absolutely marvelous. So moist, so delicious. The flavors in there are just so delicious. That corn was slightly sweet. Oh, this is so, so stinking delicious. <laughs> and I like it because there was no seasonings required. All I used was the salsa and it has all those basic flavors, cumin, oregano, a little bit of salt, maybe a splash of pepper, a little hot sauce kind of a flavor in there. Very basic, maybe a little garlic powder, but I didn't put anything else in there. I didn't put any salt or any pepper or anything in there. This is absolutely delicious and I definitely want to make it again. I had a super large potato that I needed to use and I decided I was going to make some potato wedges. These were phenomenal. I just cut them into really large wedges and I cooked them on a medium high heat. I put salt and pepper on top and these were just beautiful. I did flip them halfway through, so I've already flipped them once and just golden brown and beautiful. After I flipped them, I put salt and pepper on that side also. Oh, it was, it was so good. I'm going to tell you right now. It was so good. Once they were pretty much fork tender, right where I liked them, I took some mozzarella cheese and I sprinkled it over top. And basically at this point, you want to turn the heat off and then you just kind of spread all of the cheese on the top. Once you got it all spread out, then just take a fork or utensil or whatever and just start flipping each one of them over. And as you flip them over, they're going to start to caramelize the cheese on the bottom and it makes it like this crispy cheese stuff. It is so stinking delicious. It was hard to do with one hand, so I had to put you guys down and uh, <laughs> finish out the job. But look at that top part. That is the cheese baby. Oh, they were phenomenal. I got to go make me some right now because they were that good. Super crisp on top. And I have a little bit of homemade ranch and some pizza sauce that I needed to use. This is the last can of pizza sauce. Those are just my two favorite things to um, dip with my potato wedges. Guys, you have to try this. Super, super fabulous. They turned out beautiful. And then randomly, I had those peaches in that large uh, jar. I decided to freeze them. So I wrapped them in parchment paper and then I wrapped that in tin foil. And I did put a little bit of the juice in there with it. So that white part is not freezer burnt. That's just like the liquid that it was in. So I had that in there with my banana and then some milk. No sweetener. It was so sweet just from the peaches. This was actually really good. I've never had a banana and peach smoothie. So using up bananas and using up peaches. 
So as I was showing you in the previous meal, I have all of those gifted bell peppers that my father-in-law gave me. This is three of the four that are left. So I'm going to use most of them. That last one, I think I'm going to make a salad and put that in as the topping. But when you got fresh things, you kind of got to change everything up so that you can use up the fresh perishable items before other ingredients. So that is what I'm doing right now. I'm making some stuffed bell peppers. Normally I would put rice in there, but um, rice really isn't on the pantry staple supplies that I need to get rid of. So I am going to be using some pasta. I have this macaroni noodles. I'm on my last box. I've used all of the cheese powder. I used it um, by putting it on top of popcorn at night. I love cheesy popcorn. So that's what I did with all the cheese powders. And then I'm just using the pasta in the macaroni boxes for meals. So I'm almost done using it. And in this pot here, I have the rest of my spaghetti sauce that I had frozen. This was the last disc that I needed to use and super glad that I did. I'm just gonna add my cooked pasta noodles in there. You can use any kind of pasta you want. You can put spaghetti, that would be super delicious if you have some leftover spaghetti and you wanna change it up a bit. Just take your spaghetti, your spaghetti sauce, and then you can make stuffed bell peppers. So this is all ready to go. It's gonna be not so much on the saucy side. You'll see here, it's, it's got enough sauce, but it's not like drowning or drenched in it. So it's not gonna be overly liquidy, if that's indeed a word, liquidy. I have a greased pan that I'm gonna use for the stuffed bell peppers. Normally I would cook stuffed bell peppers in the oven, but it's a scorcher this week. We're nearing the end of our torture season, as I like to call it. And uh, we're only gonna be um, like 106 with the heat index. So, <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> uh, it's almost done. I tell my husband, we have one more month left. You know, that's the things you gotta do to get yourself through. Just one more month of this torture-ness. Just gonna stuff them bell peppers. My spaghetti sauce has mushrooms in it. It has black olives. I have ground beef in here, seasoning, of course, the tomato sauce, and there's zucchini in here also. So there's plenty of vegetables hidden in this wonderful deliciousness. All right, so those are stuffed. I have some cheese that I need to use up before it goes bad also. Um, so I am going to top each one of these with a little bit of cheese. In true frugally delicious fashion, I again uh, learned a lot cooking bell peppers on the stove. Never done that before, didn't look up anything about doing it, and that's just how I roll. So I'm going to tell you what I learned. Originally I put a little bit of butter in the bottom as an oil, and then I put the bell peppers in here, and... Then I turned it on, covered it up, and cooked it for about 20 minutes, and really nothing was happening. So I turned up the heat and cooked it for another about 10 minutes, and nothing was really happening. So I was like, you know what? These bad boys need some moisture to soften up. So I took about a half a cup of water, put it in the bottom, covered it back up, and I turned my heat to about a three, that's a medium, on my stove. And I cooked it covered for about 10 minutes, and boy, they did soften up very nicely. So these are really nice. They're like fork tender, just fork tender. Perfect. Oh my goodness. I'm loving the way they're looking. Hello, beautiful. All right, nothing crazy to do here except for to cut them open and give them a try. That was well worth the goof up. That's really good. I don't know that I've ever put macaroni in my um, stuffed bell peppers before, but this is really good. I like that uh, the sauce wasn't overly saucy. That way it's holding together pretty well. I thought all of the contents were gonna pour out. Usually I like to cut my bell peppers in half and then do it that way if I like they hold together better, but just thought it would be easier cooking it this way and they came out really nice. I'm enjoying the black olives and the pieces of mushroom in here. Oh, that is just so delicious. Of course, all those things do go good with bell peppers, so. I might be alone here, but I don't think I am. Bell peppers, to me, taste better the next day. They do make the bell pepper a little bit more on the mushy side, but if you cook it less, 
in the original cooking and then put it in the fridge and then bring it out and warm it up, I think that would be perfect. I need to use up um, a lot of the fresh ingredients I have that my father-in-law gave me from his garden. So I'm gonna make a salad. I personally like more toppings than I do lettuce. So I do have some lettuce. I got cheese that I need to use up. And then over here I have the bell pepper, tomato, and then he also gave me some banana peppers. So I just cut those up and then I made some homemade ranch. I am gonna be taking this in for my lunch. So just got it all packed and I will enjoy that later today. I know it's hot as Hades outside, but I wanted to make some chili because I had all of the ingredients to make chili. I had onions, I had some ground turkey that I needed to use in the freezer, which was part of this pantry clean out. And I had some pasta sauce I needed to use. I had to freeze a lot of the pasta sauce because I was never gonna use it in time before it went bad. So I froze them in like discs and then I'll pull them out here in a little bit and put them in the chili. So I have some onions in here that I am sauteing and I used some taco seasoning, but it wasn't quite enough seasoning for me. So I started adding a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and I'll get to the rest of the seasonings in a minute. These are the frozen discs of pasta sauce that I am using. I have two very large ones and then I have another small one off to the side. Yes, they're still frozen because I did not plan ahead. Okay. Okay. Cut me some slack, but it's fine. It's going to melt and it took like five minutes. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> and um, I'm using water, but you can use, you know, any kind of broth that you want. I used two cups originally, but I kept having to put more and more in there because the beans kept soaking it up. I've never actually cooked my beans inside of my soup before. So these are my pinto beans. I used one third cup dry. I rinsed them and I'm just gonna put them in the soup. I usually use canned beans, but I didn't have canned beans and I have a lot of pinto beans. So I was like, you know what? I'll just use pinto beans. It was kind of my mistake. I really would have preferred um, kidney beans in here but that's okay. I'm using what I got. So these are all the spices that I'm putting in there, just more of what's in that taco seasoning, but uh, I just needed more of it. And I kind of wanted to control how much of each thing I wanted to put in. So these are the two bowls. There's one more bowl on the stove. So I got three bowls. I love to top mine with sour cream and cheese. Those are my favorite things to put on there. I just love a creamy chili. I did have to cook this for about four hours because I put the beans inside. So I kept having to add water and it took me about four hours to cook this chili. Normally I'll cook ch chili in like two hours maybe. And I do like to put a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese on top. I just think it's really good. And the last magical ingredient that I put on top is a little bit of Frank's. This is like an off brand of Frank's. Super delicious still. Very like vinegary and spicy. I love it. These are the bowls. They were pretty good. I would give this dish a six. I got two more meal ideas for you. This one and then the last one. Um, this one's kind of random. I have just this one piece of a carrot left. So I am gonna chop this up. I'm gonna be making some mashed potato carrots. It's basically just taking a carrot boiling it in some water and cooking it just like you would cook a potato to mash it and make mashed potatoes. Super simple, easy. It's been a while since I've had um, mashed carrots and they're really good. So I thought that it wasn't going to chop up to be very much, but that actually is quite a bit. It doesn't look like a lot there on screen, but this is actually going to be quite a bit for mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. All right, just gonna get those boiled up and get them seasoned to the taste of what I would normally do for my mashed potatoes. And in this neck of the woods, I am gonna be making some, like a really simple roast, like oversimplified roast. I have some chuck roast that I cooked up yesterday and I did this in the Instapot. So I have just a little bit here, it's just enough for one serving. And then I reserved some of the wonderful broth from that. And I have one more can of diced tomatoes that I needed to use up. So I got a little bit left here in the can. I'm not gonna do a whole lot. And I don't think I need a whole lot of um, tomatoes for this. So just a really simple roast. And I'm just gonna cook this up and get it heated through, get those tomatoes nice and piping hot. And that is it for this. I'll probably top it with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper.
All right, there she is, plated up quite nicely. Topped it with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and this meat is so tender. Cooked it for about an hour in the um, Instapot. Super, super tender. All right, here we go. Sometimes it's just really nice not to have this like overwhelming sense of flavor. You wanna taste the food. And for me, this is it. You can taste the tomato and the roast, just a slight hint of salt and pepper. It's just absolutely simple and delicious. All right, let's get a bite of these mashed carrots. What I like about mashed carrots is it has this delicious built-in sweet taste to it, even though you didn't add any sugar to it. Just this undertone of sweetness, and it works really well with milk and the cheese and the butter, salt and pepper. I know that when I cook carrots and I just chop them up and boil them in water or steam them, I usually put salt and pepper and a little bit of butter on top. The only difference with these is that they're mashed and I added a little bit of cream, so they're super good. All right, friends, it's the last meal for this video, but it's not the last video. So what I got going on for this, it's um, kind of a spin on the previous meal, but slightly different. I won't be doing mashed carrots. I actually have some grits. I've been working away at those grits and I only have one container left. So I made one serving of grits, which is one fourth grits and one cup of water. That is all good, made, set aside. Again, I made a little bit of chuck roast. I've cooked it with the last uh, meat that I cooked. Just cooked it all together, cooked it for an hour. This one I shredded up and I've put a little bit of homemade barbecue sauce in it. My homemade barbecue sauce is just thrown together real simple. It's just ketchup, salt, pepper, Worcestershire sauce, and a pinch of brown sugar. And then you can put garlic powder and onion powder in it and that's it. So I'm just gonna put this in my pot here. And I am gonna add a little bit more ketchup to mine. I want it to be pretty ketchupy. It's gonna kind of be like a um, sloppy joe slash barbecued flavored um, shredded beef mixture. You could also do this with chicken if you wanted to. And I've almost used up all of my ketchup packets, all of my sauce packets. I'm super, super happy about that. I might put a pack or two more in there. Not quite sure yet, but I am gonna heat this up. And this is the last of that can of diced tomatoes. So I am gonna put just a few in here to cook it up. No juice, just the tomatoes. All right, so I'm gonna get that to a nice little simmer and heat it up. For my grits, I did mix in a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper, and that was it. But you could add garlic in there, onion powder, whatever you want to put in there. Maybe a little Worcestershire sauce. It will make the uh, grits go like a darker color, but anyway, that's what I put in there. And then, of course, I just put the toppings right there on top. Let's give it a taste. For me, there's just something magical about grits. It just honestly tastes good with everything. Sweet savory it doesn't matter it's so good and the the flavor of like a homemade barbecue sauce isn't as like pungent as the store-bought it's a much milder version so i like that you can you just get this nice kind of ketchupy taste to it without all of these like bam seasonings again just a, a simple dish but it honestly has a lot of flavors for being as simple as it is all right, for me, this is my favorite part. Let's see what we have left. All right, so this is what we got. I'm gonna lay it out here for you. This is a whole lot less than what I had, and I still have plenty left to complement other meals and to just basically make other meals. So just very briefly, um, I didn't do anything with those chickpeas, so I just put them in more of an airtight container and those will just have to be used here and there. This is all that's left of all of those walnuts that I had, so super happy about that. I'll just continue to put those into baked goods and into like oatmeals and yogurts and that sort of thing. 
And in here, I went ahead and I peeled all of those pistachios. And so this is those. And I've been putting these in my yogurts with a little bit of those cocoa nibs, which I forgot to get that out. The cocoa nibs are still part of this. And I have some of those alphabet uh, pastas. I, I think I only used this in one meal in total. I went through quite a bit of this cornmeal. I still have probably about one third of the bag left and I'll just have to wait until it gets a little cooler out and make a lot more cornbread. This is all I have left for the spices and the seasoning packets. This is all I have left. There's about a tablespoon left in there. So I'm hoping to use that up in the next week or so. And then all that's left is the grits. I did use all of the other container that I had and then I've only used about one serving out of this. So I'm super happy with the meals that I got out of this and I feel like nothing went to waste. I, all the broths that I made from everything, all the scraps, I made broths. I mean, I feel I feel like I feel useful. <laughs> anyway, this is what I have left. I hope you guys enjoyed these um three pantry clean out meals I did from the meal items that I had to use up or the food items. And I hope you got some ideas. I really do. I, I, I hope this inspires you to, to do, go through your own cabinets and, and look and see what you got and just use it up before you go out and you buy anything new and spend your hard earned money. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Happy eating my friends.